Hi. Hello. How are you doing? What's your name? Teresa. Teresa? Yes. Nice to meet you. Wonderful to meet you. It's Thank a really you. cool opportunity. Good. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Um, so my question. Yeah. Um, my question is around spiritual materialism. Mm -hmm. And um, what I perceive to be as somewhat of a fancy social club <laughs> and um, social scene mm -hmm. that is dressed up and cloaked in spiritual rhetoric mm -hmm. and um, fancy crystals and expensive meditation retreats. Mm -hmm. And um, not that I am not participating in any way in this, which is why I'm asking the question and mm -hmm. see it firsthand. Mm -hmm. um, and whether or not that is ultimately progress and it's just um, our transition Mm -hmm. where we are now taking concepts and human issues that have been problems for centuries, you know, status and wanting to belong. And now it's just become integrated into mm -hmm. our desire for consciousness mm -hmm. and freedom mm -hmm. or whether it's actually quite dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I've also seen it a very interesting concept. I spent a lot of time in India working there in Mumbai and I would see the way that we do yoga in the West and the way we approach it actually start to bring it back to India. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. that same kind mm -hmm. of spiritual elitism, yeah. which I'm not sure existed mm -hmm. before, but I could also be wrong. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's my question. Well, same thing with me, you know, people, a lot of people criticize what I do. And yet, when I go to India, thousands of people come to see with me because they rather they, they see a Westerner who's doing it, who came to India and got the hit, who seems to, and they respect that so much. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's really the question is, you know, the most important thing in, in life is motivation. Mm -hmm. You can change the outside things, but you can't change a person's motivation. Right. Until a person is hungry for, for uh, real love, mm -hmm. uh, they're not going to look for it. And unfortunately, in our culture, or whatever, in our culture, real love, unconditional love, not romantic love, but mm -hmm. you know, the love that is our true nature is not something that we're even aware of. So most people don't even think it's possible. Mm -hmm. So, of course, Indian stuff comes to the West, and then we, we use it to create businesses and pay our rent and attract other people and do all that stuff. Nothing, mm -hmm. That's perfectly normal. I don't mm -hmm. think there's anything, it's certainly not dangerous, mm -hmm. because it doesn't, it doesn't have any effect on, on who looks and who doesn't look. That mm -hmm. comes from inside, right. you know, totally from inside. What the culture does is what the culture does. And you just, it, it's not something that, you know, it's just the way the world is. Is there, I mean, in some cases, it's blatant hypocrisy, though. I mean, I would, that... I would certainly hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but that's from, I guess, from a spiritual um, progression or consciousness change, yeah. evolution, which perhaps all those words in itself is, mm -hmm. Um, spiritual ego, but mm -hmm. in that, like, if in that context, is it maybe dangerous? Isn't the wrong word, but isn't the right word? But is that sort of hindering our growth? Growth is individual. Mm -hmm. You know, individual. Unless an individual longs for real love and longs to be free from suffering mm -hmm. and has some sense that their own issues are the thing that's causing their suffering they're not going to do anything to alleviate that suffering. So I don't think it's, you know, it's, yeah. not, uh, it's not the real issue, you know. So what's the real issue? Well, the real issue, once again, is, is it's true that the Dharma or spiritual teachings, as they enter into new cultures, transform the way they look inside mm -hmm. that culture. It doesn't water them down necessarily. Mm. But, but that's still nothing to do with business, you know. But look at the name, the, the repetition of the name, which is what I do. They say every repetition, every single repetition of the name is a seed that get, gets planted. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. right? Now, the important thing with planting the seed is how you plant it. Mm -hmm. Do you plant it in the right place or do you just throw it out on the walk? Does it get watered? Does it get protected so the cows can't eat it or the cars can't crush it? So the most important thing in planting a seed is how, how it's planted. After, after you plant it, then is it taken care of? So some people do chanting as a way to get famous, as a way to make money, as a way to attract romantic relationships to themselves. You know, that they're doing business with the name. Mm -hmm. So they'd be doing business anyway with something else. But the name is a seed that has a positive energy that cannot be destroyed and you plant a seed of the name sooner or later it will bring fruit mm -hmm. it will take root and when that is we don't know but if you plant the seed it's going to take fruit so even though this person is planting it with the idea of attracting people to himself making money feeling good about themselves acting like a great this or a great that they're still planting a seed of of the name which in time will bring a, a positive influence into their future life. Maybe next week, maybe next year, maybe 10,000 births from now. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to judge these things. People will yeah. be people. People need to eat, right? People mm -hmm. need to eat. People need to have clothes. They need to be getting around here and there. They need to find a way to support themselves. Is using yoga and stuff like that bad? I don't think so. It's no. not useful for them necessarily, but is it bad? I don't think it's destructive or dangerous. No, not inherently. I think for me it's more about people who make their money in another way and then they parade around and they leverage these chakras and spiritual concepts to perhaps, you know, manipulate women or, um, you know, go to Tulum and I've participate in the infrastructure <laughs> erosion, you know? Uh -huh, Me too. Yeah, sure. um, but it's good to be aware of, it's, sometimes it feels like some, you know, a group's spirituality goes as far as what's convenient for them. Yeah, sure. And I think you're right, and I do, I do, I do think that's ultimately, that's not, it, it's planting a seed for them that at one point they will get there, mm -hmm. and myself as well. Um, but yeah, it's just at this point in time, I'm just, I think, more concerned and acutely aware of how quickly humans need to kind of catch up to true love and what love is. Yeah. And when I see people around me kind of just cloaking the same old, same old with their mm -hmm. spiritual rhetoric, um, it just sort of frightens me. Well, you know, I had a friend named Fred <clears throat> who was a really intense Zen meditator. And he used to say, when I go to, he was a little Jewish guy from Shaker Heights, Cleveland. Mm -hmm. He said, when I go home to meet my mother, to stay with mommy, she hates it when I'm a Buddhist, but she loves me when I'm Buddha. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once again, we, the most thing, the best thing we can do for the world is to cleanse our hearts from hatred and judgment mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And when you do that for yourself, the people around that will feel that, the people around them will feel that. It, it goes from heart to heart. And um, I get caught in it too. I mean, because like I see, I see a lot of stuff too, and I go like, oh my God. But you know, <laughs> the real thing it comes from within. It's an individual thing, and it mm -hmm. expresses itself through everything we do in life. You know. If you want to really have compassion for and develop compassion, we have to pay some attention to that, which means those knee-jerk reactions that we have against stuff that we think is out there, is our judgmental mind. Mm -hmm. In some sense, it's really a part of us we're seeing that we don't like. Yeah, exactly. You know, so mm -hmm. that's what the real work is inside. And if you're doing the real work, the judgments calm down little by little. But. Um, yeah, yoga business, you know. <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah, well, the industry People is don't even do yoga industry. in India, you know. It's mm -hmm. the Westerners who do yoga. And in certain ashrams, yeah. they do some asana practice. Yeah. People in India, what they do is pray and sing mm -hmm. all day long. Anytime you can always hear somebody doing puja, 
ringing a bell, chanting mantras, chanting prayers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, there's big fancy yoga studios in Mumbai now. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you just kind of wish the best for everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the best. And I, and I don't think once again, I think you know somebody might be attracted to that, and but if they have a sincere motivation, which is a karmic mm -hmm. inner readiness. Mm -hmm. They might extract something good from that and then move on. So yeah. you just never know. It can't, the way things look to us is not really the way things are. So, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe this, this is all just part of the dance. You know? Yeah, I think so. I think okay, so. cool.